గారు శ్రీమతి దగ్గుపాటి పురేందేశ్వరి గారు given me the opportunity to partake in the uh, discussion pertaining to the allocations made for the ministry of uh, uh, health and family welfare um, sir uh, initially i would like to congratulate shrimati nirmala sitaraman ji for having uh, presented her seventh consecutive budget in the house and also i would like to congratulate shri nadda ji who has very uh, ingeniously uh, made the allocations for the various departments in his own ministry keeping in mind the challenges that the country is facing today pertaining to the health sector sir even as india is making great strides in terms of gdp where the world gdp is about 3% and uh, the gdp of india is estimated to be anywhere between 7.2 to 7, uh, to 8% uh, india is in a state of uh, economical and uh, demographical transition today and keeping this in mind i think uh, the uh, when it comes to the health sector there is a lot more space for us to actually maneuver and to uh, and to move around so the uh, to achieve the uh, the the set targets in in our country when it comes to health i think uh, the infrastructure in our country also needs to ramp itself up and the health infrastructure has been stretched and it needs to be strengthened further having said that sir the against this background uh, the very thought to establish wellness centers because uh, if we have to uh, take into consideration the uh, the health concerns of the country at the tertiary level i think our roots will also have to be very strong and uh, going by what is said earlier by our ancestors that prevention is better than cure uh, the setting up of wellness centers at the ground level i think is a very welcome measure wherein the primary health screening is done and then probably uh, if if so required they would be uh, sent to uh, for tertiary care to district and other higher hospitals um so even as i appreciate and welcome the setting up of the um, the wellness centers which are the arogya kendras at, at at the grassroots level i think we would also have to introspect on the condition and situation of our chcs and phcs so today they are a star they are literally starved of infrastructure at the chcs and phcs where we do not have the required number of doctors in place or paramedics in place and i'm sure all of us have been seeing uh, time and again um in media where even power or electricity has been cut to these chcs and phcs and in the light of the torches uh, there have been surgeries that have been done to so i think there we need to kind of work with the state governments as well to ensure that these uh, the infrastructure at the chcs and phcs are strengthened i have been listening with rapt attention to my colleagues on the other side of the benches who have repetitively been speaking about the 2.5% of the gdp that needs to be allocated for health and uh, the central government not doing enough when it comes to allocation so may i remind them that the 2.5% of the gdp that needs to be allocated for health is not necessarily the central government alone but the states would also have to be proactive and for coming to uh, put in their allocations and we see largely that the states are not so forthcoming when it comes to their priorities when it uh, uh, when it comes to the the health sir and uh, sir uh, i have also been listening to my friends on the other side when they are repetitively talking about out of pocket expenditure which is large in our country but we also have to appreciate sir the work done by the the interventions done by the central government by setting up not only the wellness centers uh, which help in screening of the uh, of the uh, of the patients but also in 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 setting up the jan aushadi kendras because largely Uh, the patients have to spend large amounts of money and the burden on the on, on on the people of india is largely when it comes to medicines so the jan aushadi kendras actually help in reduction of uh, of expenditure to to the patients and also the ayushman bharat which um, actually provides insurance coverage for 50 crore population in our country so even as i speak about uh, our uh, the ayushman bharat i would definitely have to uh, talk about my state of andhra pradesh where there was a scheme that was run in the name of arogya shri and uh, the the then chief minister shri jagan mohan reddy uh, he applauded himself and said that he was uh, expanding the, the the uh, the uh, the um, ayushman bharat 
by because Ayushman Bharat covered only about a thousand and odd uh, health uh, uh, initiatives, whereas his own scheme covered large more, close to about two thousand plus. But in the whole uh, scheme of things, he not having paid the private hospitals who were actually shouldering the Ayushman Bharat and the Arugya Shri today have refused to come forward and support the Ayushman Bharat and the Arugya Shri. And this is negatively impacting the Ayushman Bharat scheme in our, in our own state. So I would request the Honorable Minister, even as she is seated here, to kindly take note of this and to ensure that uh, the, uh, the difficulties that our state is facing is overcome. Sir, having said that, the skilled workforce in our country is also a problem. Like, for example, physicians. We have just about seven physicians for about 10,000 population in our country, whereas the requirement is, is largely more. So keeping that in mind, the intent to actually increase the number of colleges and to connect them to the government hospitals is very welcome. But however, sir, we need to keep in mind that even as we increase the number of colleges, the required number of teaching staff is also going to be an issue for us and in our uh, attempt or in, in, in all the good attempt, uh, intent that the central government has to improve the workforce, I think we need to keep in mind the quality also. Um, as, as I had mentioned, there is a shortage of teaching staff already uh, in the medical colleges and how do we fill this gap is going to be uh, um, um, uh, an area of concern for us. Sir, uh, I have been listening to my colleagues when they have been saying that very little has been uh, allocated for mental health. Sir, there has been an increase from 63 crores to 90 crores when it comes to mental health. I do agree, sir, given to the given into the fact that there's a lot of psychological pressure on our children when it comes to neutral, neutral families, the after effects of, uh, of COVID, and also, if I may say, the drug addiction that we see in, in the country. I think this increase in allocation is welcome, though we desire that a lot more should be done in, in this um, direction. Sir, so Digital U Win is a wonderful um, uh, uh, is a wonderful intervention, sir, where people largely who are migrating, we have a lot of migrant force, and when they are migrating, they do not have to carry their physical records, but they have it all stored in a digital portal, and wherever they go, for them to uh, access them would be very easy, and the medical records are safe, and this is uh, assuring uh, the entire country that it is also kept confidential. So the digital UN is really um, welcome. Sir, the increase of 4% for research is very, very important important in our country today because uh, we see an increase of non-communicable uh, diseases. Uh, and even as I speak, we are also hearing of uh, new diseases that are coming in in the form of NIFA and so on and so forth. And therefore, we need to really uh, uh, come in, uh, in, increase our allocations for research to ensure that we are able and capable to, uh, to face such challenges that come up. Needless to say, the other interventions in the medical sector as well. And therefore, sir, the increase in um, allocation for um, research is uh, really welcome, sir. Sir, uh, having said that, uh, we, we need to also look at the interim budget, the provisions in the interim budget, even as we look at the provisions in the budget itself. Sir, in the interim budget, there has been a uh, uh, mention that uh, uh, Ayushman Bharat would today be ex extended to Anganwadi workers, ASHA workers, and uh, other workers at the Anganwadis, and also senior citizens who are 70 plus. Sir, today we have, even as we talk of our demographic dividend, we have longevity that has increased in our country. And where we were talking about 62, 65 years, today we are talking about 72 to 75 years of longevity. So keeping that in mind, sir, geriatrics has been a very, very neglected uh, section when it comes to the health sector. So keeping that in mind, sir, I think extending the Ayushman Bharat cards to 70 plus uh, senior citizens is rather very welcome and uh, would support them even in their uh, long, uh, 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 even at the older ages. Um, sir, I was also listening to many of my colleagues 
uh, who were uh, talking about uh, about setting up of of tertiary hospitals like AIMS, where the uh, in number of AIMS have increased, but uh, the uh, the the speed at which the construction should happen has not been happening, sir. But we need to also keep in mind that state governments, uh, as their share, would have to give in the provide the infrastructure wherein largely when it comes to our own names in Mangalagiri in Andhra Pradesh, there had been an inordinate delay in construction of AIMS because the state government would not remove the high tension wires from this site or remove the uh, the, the electrical uh, uh, things that were existing there. So there was an in inordinate delay. Besides that, 10 crores of rupees was, was all that the, we were looking for from the state government to provide drinking water and water facility to AIMS. But even that was denied for a long, long time, which, act, which actually delayed the construction of, of AIMS. Therefore, state governments sir, would have to be very forthcoming when the central government is all willing to do, go out and do everything to uh, improve the, uh, the uh, health infrastructure in our country. I think even the state governments would have have to come forward, sir. Sir, the, uh, the, when, uh, as I was talking about the uh, digital mission, the ABDM, um, sir, which was launched in 2021 as part of Ayushman Bharat Digital Machine, uh, Mission, we need to keep in mind that the health records, sir, have been uh, today are 39.77 crores that have been linked with ABA cards. When you link them with ABA cards, sir, as I had spoken about UVIN, it makes it very, very easy for them when they travel with their ABA cards to, to, um, to um, access their records which are digitally uh, saved, sir. And, uh, sir, the, uh, the Janavshadi Kendra, sir, as I had mentioned earlier, uh, the Janavshadi Kendra today, they, they provide medicines at a much cheaper rate, almost 50 to 90 percent cheaper than what they're available or lesser in rate uh, uh, as to what they're available in the, uh, in the markets. And uh, just recently, the, the 10,000 Janavshadi Kendra was actually uh, inaugurated, sir, at Ames in, in, in Devgarh last year. Sir, uh, even as I speak of Janavshadi Kendra... Kindly conclude, madam. Yes, sir. Uh, even as I talk about Jan Aushadi Kendras, we also need to uh, keep in mind the fact that today India is called the pharmacy of the world. Um, and we not only are, uh, are producing our own medicines, but are, a, but are in a situation where we are able to supply to the entire world. But sir, I think uh, I would like to draw the attention of the minister to the fact that we need to invest in API manufacturing. We are solely dependent today on China, sir. And uh, uh, once we, uh, we are successful in manufacturing our own APIs, I think medicines would be much more available. Sir, coming to the last point, the cancer that many of us are, are quite, quite concerned about. Sir, Global Observatory had said that India stands third after uh, China and USA when it comes to the incidences of cancer in our country. Therefore, the, th the three uh, medications uh, which the uh, BCD or basic customs duty has been read reduced on is a welcome measure which will actually make cancer uh, treatment available to people who are in deeply need of it and also the x-ray tubes and the flat screens the BCD being reduced on it would actually make uh, medical care and attention uh, easily accessible to people who actually need it sir. Sir, uh, I would I only like to conclude by saying that even as the central government provides for the healthcare in, in the country. It is up to the states to also come forward proactively and avail the support that the central government is coming. So even as the central government comes up with a health policy, uh, it would be ideal if state governments could come up with a, high, uh, with a health policy of their own, keeping their own issues of the state in mind so that they can come up with innovative interventions to ensure that health is made available and reachable to all. Thank you, sir.